Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome back. Today I'm going to share a project with you which was probably one of the funnest ones that I have done in the last 15 or 20 years. Not too long ago I managed to reconnect with a friend that I had from about 30 years ago when I was a teenager. We found each other on Facebook and spent quite a bit of time sharing what we've done with our lives over all these years. It turns out that, like his father before him, he became a firefighter. And I was pretty surprised to find out that he had actually been watching some of my videos on YouTube. When we were hanging out all those years ago, I had just begun to learn woodworking. He told me that he really liked the idea of woodworking and he wanted to try his hand at it because he wanted to make a gift for his mom. We decided this would be a great chance for us to get together and hang out again. And maybe I could show him a few things since these days I have a little more experience. So my friend wanted to build a shadow box, something that he could hang on the wall and put some keepsake items in it for his mom. On the front of the firefighter's helmet is a heavy leather shield which signifies who they are and their rank. He had one of these for himself and one for his father. And his brother is a soldier in the army so he got a leather patch from his brother's army unit to put in the shadow box as well. And off we went. So the first step in this project, like any project, is getting all of the pieces milled down to an approximate size. I showed Mike how to use the various woodworking tools and he picked it up right away. We decided cherry would be the perfect wood for this shadow box. We decided to dovetail the corners of the box together, so once we got them cut down to size, we took it over to the dovetail jig and I went ahead and cut the dovetails. I'm not going to go in any great depth here as to how these were cut, but I do have several videos that I show step by step just exactly how to cut through dovetails, and I'll put a link to those in the description. Once those were done, it was time for a quick dry fit. And it looks like everything went together okay. Once the dry fit looks good, the next step is to glue it up and clamp it together. While we're doing the glue up, I would just like to take a minute to thank all of my Patreon supporters. I can't tell you how much it means to us that you are helping to support this channel and allow us to produce more content. Since going full time producing videos, I think this is the most fun our family's ever had. All of us love woodworking, all of my daughters and my wife. Uh, my wife actually films everything and it's been a lot of fun for us to be out here uh, building these projects and sharing them with everybody. Okay, back to our glue up here. I just want to mention that one thing that I like to do whenever I glue up a joint is I like to make sure that I put glue on every surface of both sides of the joint. That way there's never an area that accidentally doesn't get any glue. And my glue of choice for all of these operations is typically Tight Bond 3. And I like to use parallel clamps to glue up the frame of any type of a carcass or structure. Another thing that is critically important is to ensure that your corners are square. I take my uh, woodpecker squares and the, the square blocks that I got from Rockler and I put these in the corners and clamp them lightly just to make sure my structure stays square while it glues up. And once the glue is dried it's time to give it a first sanding. 
Typically when we cut dovetail joints, the tails and pins stick just a tiny bit out from the surface and we'll sand those down to flush at this point. Now we're going to turn our attention to the frame, the picture frame portion that goes on the front of the shadow box. We will give it the same milling treatment that we gave the other material before. We'll get it perfectly flat on one side on the jointer, then we'll take it to the planer to get the other side parallel to that, and then we'll cut it to the exact length we need. Since I have a router table, I'm going to go ahead and cut the molding myself for the picture frame. You can certainly buy pre-cut molding, or if you have a router, uh, access to a router table, then you can simply buy raised panel bits, or there's a whole variety of bits that work great for different profiles for picture frames. I have chosen a standard uh, OG style raised panel bit, and I'll put a link to this in the description in case you're interested. This is the exact same bit that I make the vast majority of my raised panel doors for cabinets with. Now I'm going to take these pieces over to my Ingram miter sled here and I'm going to cut out the angles for the picture frame. This is a fantastic tool and it lets you cut a huge variety of angles, I think to a half or a tenth of a degree of accuracy, something pretty incredible. But the truth is, if you just want to cut a 45, I have built a miter sled uh, that will do the same thing and it's very, very cheap to build. Right after I did this project, I built a table saw sled. Although, oddly enough, that video came out first, but I'll put a link to that video uh, at the end of this video so that you can take a look at it if you're interested. It will allow you to bake uh, absolutely perfect 45-degree uh, miter joints for picture frames. So for the glue up here, I'm not going to bother uh, putting biscuits in these joints or any type of joint reinforcement at all. Because once this picture frame is built, the whole picture frame will also be flat glued on to the, to the, to the carcass, to the body of the shadow box, and it will be incredibly strong at that point. There's a little bit of a secret to gluing up a perfect picture frame, and that is getting four parallel clamps and these riser blocks that hold the parallel clamps in place. Then you put your clamps in place and you close the clamps down until they are very close to the wood. At that point you can glue up your wood, slide it in place, and a couple of twists of the clamp and they will glue up perfectly. One thing to note is that you do have to bring the clamp pressure down equally on all sides. If you don't, then the joint might shift a little bit to one side or the other, but that's easy to fix by just adjusting the clamp pressure a little bit. After clamping, we'll clean off the excess glue with a damp rag and let it dry. Then I like to sand the profile a little bit. Uh, so we do some sanding before and then some sanding after. These sanding pads and this sandpaper is really amazing stuff. I'll put a link to it. It's very cheap. I'll put a link to that in the description in case you want to look at that. It really helps you sand profiles perfectly. Once the picture frame has been sanded flat to get all the excess glue off, it's time to glue it onto the body of the shadow box. So something I should mention here, when I do shadow boxes, I actually let the frame part, the picture frame part, uh, when I build it, I build it a tiny bit bigger. I let it stick over all of the edges a very small amount, maybe be somewhere between a 32nd uh, to maybe a 16th of an inch, and then I'll sand it flush at the end. And of course, it's really quite a bit of sanding, so it is best if you use a belt sander. I have a belt sander with 36 grit and it will take this down flush in just a matter of seconds. Once it's flush, don't go too far and then you'll need to switch to your random orbit sander in order to clean it up and get rid of all the scratches that the belt sander made.
And there's the completed frame and body, and I think it looks pretty good. We'll let Mike help us out with a little more sanding on the inside. Because without a doubt, that is the funnest job in the shop. Once the sanding is complete, I'm going to cut a rabbit in the back all the way around in order to hold the plywood back. I'm going to need to do this in a couple of passes because I actually want the rabbit to go about three quarters of an inch deep. So I'm going to go all the way around first at this depth and you can kind of see what that looks like there. And then I'm going to raise the router bit another three eighths and I'm going to go all the way around it one more time. The reason for the extra deep rabbit is so that when the plywood back goes on, it sits recessed about a half an inch in from the, uh, from the rear of the sides. And by having it recessed, that allows me to put a hidden French cleat on the back of this so it's easy to hang on the wall. Now that that's all done, I'll go ahead and cut the back out of quarter inch cherry plywood. If you notice, the corners of the rabbit all the way around were rounded. I could either chisel those square or I can just round the edges of this. And this is what we chose to do since it's a little bit easier. So after that we made Mike do the final sanding on everything and he did a beautiful job. So there it is all put together with the back in place. So now it'll be time for a finish. For the finish we chose my go-to favorite which is lacquer. I like lacquer by a company called Deft, D-E-F-T. They make a spray lacquer and you can buy it by the gallon or if you have a small project like this you can buy it in these cans. And you just spray it on. I typically spray two or three coats and then before the final coat I sand it very lightly with some 600 grit paper and then do a final coat after that and it really comes out beautifully. Lacquer is one of the hardest and most durable finishes that there are and it really allows the, the beauty of the grain to come out as well. Another great benefit is that it dries extremely fast. It's ready for recoat in about 10 minutes and after the final coat everything is really dry to the touch in about 10 or 15 more minutes. Uh, so here's that step after we've put a couple of coats on. We're going to just sand it real lightly with some 600 grit and then put one more final coat. Finally, we will need to make the French cleat for the back. French cleat system basically involves two boards. One will mount to our project, one will mount to the wall, and they're both cut at a 45. So when your project hangs on the one on the wall, the 45 degree angles just hook together and hold it in place and it will hold an enormous amount of weight as well. We've got to measure it and cut it to the exact length and then once again I'm going to need to take this over to the sander and sand the corners round since the inside of my rabbit is also round. Next we'll try a quick test fit to see how it looks and that looks okay. And you can see now why we made the recess probably so deep for the rabbit and that's so this French cleat is actually hidden behind the side of the wall. So we can't see it when we're looking at the side of the shadow box hanging on the wall. And here's the bottom portion of the French cleat which will hook into the top one. That bottom portion that I'm sliding there is the one that actually gets attached to the wall itself. We decided to use a clear silicone to attach the glass to the frame. I know it comes out white, but it does dry perfectly clear. 
We could have used clips, uh, but I like this idea better. Uh, I think it holds the glass a little bit more securely, and should the glass ever break, it's actually pretty easy to use a razor knife and just trim and peel that silicone off in order to replace it in the future. And I'm just smoothing it down in order to press it down firmly against the glass and the inside of the wall there. For the next step, we have measured and marked all around the inside of the frame in order to attach the plywood back to the body of the frame itself. Uh, we're going to uh, pre-drill a small hole, put in a countersink, and then put really short number six wood screws all the way around to hold it in place. And my friend's little boy got very interested in woodworking too, so hey, we just might have another future woodworker on our hands. I'll need to sand off some of the lacquer in this area so that when I attach the flinch cleat with glue, it'll make a good bond. The French cleat itself will be permanently bonded to the back of the plywood and we'll actually screw the whole thing into the carcass of the frame itself. We are taking care not to let the glue get all the way to the edges because we don't want the French cleat accidentally gluing itself to the side walls of the frame. We only want it to be attached permanently to the plywood back. We're just locating all of the holes for the screws that we're going to screw the back onto the frame with. It'll be the same procedure here. We're going to put a pilot hole first, uh, then we'll follow up with a countersink, and then we'll put screws in. The screws that go through this portion, of course, will have to be a half inch longer than the ones that just go through the plywood itself. You'll probably notice we're putting a lot of these in by hand. That's always the safest way to go, especially when dealing with very thin wood or thin plywood. Uh, you can certainly put them in with a screw gun like this, but you've got to be very careful because an extra squeeze if you go just a little bit too quick and it'll go far too deep. We took the time to lay these out like Mike wanted. Mike's on the left, his dad is in the center, and his brother is on the right. You can see the silicon has dried perfectly clear. And now it's time to go ahead and assemble it for the last time. I think that is going to make an absolutely wonderful gift for his mother. I'm sure she'll love it. That's a beautiful keepsake shadow box that represents a family of heroes. I had so much fun helping Mike build this project. Everything we do in my wood shop is family oriented and fun anyway, but this week was extra special. We got to reconnect remember our great times together, and share those memories with our families. And I'm really glad I get to share this with all of you. <laughs> we made them pose an awful lot with their project. I think they both did a fantastic job putting that together. And Cy might have had the biggest blast of all. Mike let her try on his real firefighter helmet.